All right, welcome to our Facebook Live. Um, we've been doing a few of these this year. And if you remember from last month, we talked to our community engagement coordinator, Andrea. And now, oh, also, if you don't know who I am, my name is Lauren Carpenter. I do our social media and PR. So usually I'm behind the camera, but today I'm in front. So nice to see everyone. And so um, be able to give you more of an inside look into HVAF, what we do, and uh, the people who um, are serving um, the veterans that you support um, every single day. So we have um, one of those people right here. I have Bobby with me today. How are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Good, good. All Thanks right. for taking time to talk with me. I know yeah. you're a very busy guy. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, so um, well, it's pretty interesting for you because not only um, do you work here, you're also a veteran yourself. Yes. So uh, thank you for your service. Thank you. And uh, you were um, in the Army. So why, first, why did you want to join the Army? Um, you know, I was 19 years old, um, just looking for a new challenge, something different in, in life. Um, I was working construction and factory jobs before that, and I just needed a new challenge. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go talk to the Army recruiter. Yeah, did you have family in the Army? Um, I had an uncle that was in the Army, yes. Okay, cool. And so, um, when, so what year was that when you first joined? Um, March of 2000. Okay. And um, how many years did you serve? 21 years, two months, eight days. All right. Just, you know, a little bit about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what was your experience like in the Army? Um, you know, just like any uh, new job that you go to, uh, it has its ups and downs, but the overall experience um, was great. I met people, lifelong family members, um, you know, that are considered family now. If I needed anything to this day, I could call them and they would be there for me. Um, and, and, you know, it was a great experience that allowed me to stay 21 years. Yeah. And um, I guess what, what specifically did you do in the Army? I was a 12 Bravo combat engineer. Um, so I went through minefields, blew stuff up. Easiest way for me to explain is if you've seen the first Transformers, <laughs> Bone Crusher on there. He's the Buffalo. Um, we use that to go around and look for IEDs in, in the Iraq uh, war. Mm -hmm. So that's the easiest way for me to explain it to people. Also, if you've seen Seven Private Ryan when he's shoving uh, Bangalore through the minefield on the uh, beach right there, mm -hmm. that's that's what I do. That's what we do. Nice, awesome. Um, is there any like I guess interesting story about like maybe like. Not even exactly like being in the military, but like when, just even like abroad, you know, when you're serving, like anything cool, like maybe like a, like a party story you share with people. Um, I mean, it, it's, I guess the, the most interesting thing in, um, is what I've seen um, going into the military, um, lived in the barracks my, my first, uh, you know, year-ish. Um, it, it was interesting because no matter you know where you're from or who you're used to hanging out with um friday nights in the barracks it, it was a, a come into town everybody was family it didn't matter if they knew you or not they would just bring you in um and, and at that time we were uh in barracks they was a, a we had a shared community bathrooms uh so there was like two on each floor uh, and, and, and you know, you can just imagine what, what soldiers do uh, on weekends when they're off. Um, but it, it was fun time. The interest, most interesting thing is, is, you know, meeting the people that you, you, you think you wouldn't have nothing in common with, but you really do have something in common with them. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you went straight from army to HVAF, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So why did you want to work here when you, once you were getting out of the military? Uh, so, you know, in the military, I got to train and mentor soldiers. Um, and as I was transitioning out, I thought a lot about what I wanted to do. And, and I, I came across um, helping veterans and families. And I got to thinking, you know, what better career field to get into um, than helping those that, that paved the way for my military career. So a lot of times while you're in the military, you're focused on the, the soldiers that are right there in front of you. Um, we don't really think about the soldiers from the past generation, um, generations that, that paved the way for, at my, in this instance, my career and, and how it went. Um, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to be able to give back um, to those soldiers um, that, that paved the way for my career to go the way it did. Yeah. 
Awesome. Yeah. So what is, um, I guess your, your title and like your role, like what, what's every day look like? Uh, I am a case manager with the permanent support and house transition in place, um, team. Uh, what I do on a daily basis is I interact with my veterans. Uh, most of the day I spend trying to find housing for them. Um, so reaching out to property managers, landlords, um, anybody that I can, can reach out to that, that would be able to help us, um, may either find houses um, or apartments to rent or rent us houses and apartments. Yeah. And um, how would you say that your, um, how, do, how do you use kind of your military service and what you learned in the Army? How do you, how does that translate to your job now? Um, I think it, it translates, what I've noticed when, when I first came on and, and I was um, learning I think it, it transitions over easily because um, I, I introduce myself and I share with them uh, my background, where I'm coming from, and oftentimes um, we, we have some commonalities. Either we were you know, stationed at the same place, um, different times, but same place. Um, sometimes uh, I come across some veterans that, that served overseas. Um, at the same time that I did, we were in the same place at the same time. We may not have ran across each other then, uh, but, but we were there at the same time. So I feel I have a, a little bit of a edge uh, because I can re relate with them on that personal level of their military experience and what they went through or what they're, not really what they're going through in the, the process right now, uh, but what they went through and what led them up to, to where they are at now um, needing HBAF's help. Yeah, and I, you know, I've seen firsthand um, some of the veterans that you've been able to help, you know, even just this year, you know, with um, in our February newsletter and blog, um, we shared about Nigel, um, how you know, he's working at Indianapolis Urban League and you helped him find an apartment and Tanaya as well. Um, we just shared about her this past week and how you helped her with her own house. So. Um, so yeah, you've already been able to see, you know, um, you know, these veterans, you know, start from one place and be able to grow. And so do you have like a favorite you know, success story so far? Um, I, I don't have a favorite success story. I look at it as, um, as you stated, they, they, each veteran starts in a different place. Um, so as long as they're moving forward and growing from that place, they are a success. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're becoming successful and, and I'm just, Happy to be along for that ride um, and help them in any way I can to continue um, for them to be successful and end in, the, in the, the position that they want to end in. Yeah, and it's easy for us, I know, to share kind of the, I guess, success stories, you know, the, you know, the happy times yeah. and everything, but obviously there's a lot of hardships with this job. Um, is there any you'd be able to share so people can kind of know, like, what, what it is, what it's like realistically? Um, th there are hardships. Um, the, the number one hardship um, is, is finding the housing. Um, veterans come with, with uh, barriers that, that tend to um, stop them from getting housing on their own for whether if they lost their job for COVID or whatever the, the circumstance may, may be. Um, and you know, when veterans come here, I think they're kind of misinformed. They think that we have houses already lined up for them they don't have to do background checks or anything. Um, you know, that we just partner with people and they should be able to slide into a house immediately. Um, it, it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Um, so that, that's my greatest frustration. I, I know, you know, the veterans, you know, came across some bad times and unfortunately they're in the position that they're in. Um, everybody deserves a second chance, but uh, you know, sometimes the, these property managers and these landlords are looking at it as an investment opportunity are they a good investment um, and even with us signing on you know some people say no I'm not I'm not willing to do that and that's very frustrating to me um, because I know uh, that, that this program especially the transition in place um, how they're attached to us and for how long they're attached to us for um, that they're you know odds are they're going to be successful within this program um, and I just wish that the that, uh, outside people would see that. Yeah, for sure. So what would you say is your, maybe your favorite reason why you work here? Or what you like most about working here? I'm helping people help themselves and, and you know, get back on their feet. That's, that's what I really want to do. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm able to do that here and I'm able to see um, the outcome of the work that the veteran put in 
um, at the end of it. It's not like, you know, they're attached to me for a month or two months and then I don't ever see them again. We have a, a longer relationship with that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then even I'm, I'm here almost a year, April 16th will be a year, uh, successfully discharged um, a couple and they even continue to reach out to me today just to give me updates on, on how they're doing. Um, and, and to me, that's the, the best thing, you know, that I can ask for here at HBAF. Yeah. Do you have any, like, a future goals here or anything? I wouldn't really say I, I have any future goals. I want to continue to help as many veterans as we can help here. Um, so I, I guess, you know, that, that's where I want to be. So my aspirations are to stay um, and be in the, the trenches, if you will, with the veterans and, and helping them. Um, overcome um, all their barriers and be successful again. Mm -hmm. yeah, is there anything else you want to share? Maybe something you think our you know supporters uh, should know more about our veterans, HVAF, anything like that. Um, just want to let our supporters know that you know, given uh, the opportunity and the right um, you know mentorship for the specific veterans, that they will be successful. Um, don't close the door on them if they have one or two uh, unsuccessful. Um, rides before uh, and I just want to thank you for for being there for us and, and without y'all uh, we wouldn't be able to help the veterans um, that we do help um, and just know that they are being successful within HVAF thank you yeah thank you Bobby for, for sharing and for helping our veterans and all of that so it's much appreciated so yeah and thanks for tuning in and uh, you know, you're already on our Facebook page, so thanks for, uh, if you haven't liked our page yet, go ahead and like it. If you do, thank you. And uh, you can learn more about us at hvaf.org. Thanks, guys. Happy Thursday. Bye. <laughs>